Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Here as always with my very good friend, Jose Neuer. Unfortunately, we are without Ryan this week. He's got some stuff to take care of, but I'm sure we can give it a go by ourselves, Joe. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. Thank you, Lee. Very, very good. Thank you. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Um, bless him. So we'll just, uh, yeah, when he comes back, we, we, you know, we're sending the love. Always, always. Absolutely. Glad to hear you're doing well as well. Thank you everyone out there for supporting us, listening on whatever podcast platform you're on or following us on YouTube. Or of course, the best way to do it, you can be with us live on both YouTube and TikTok. Jay Noya underscore Inspiration Nation on TikTok and uh, just search for Jose Noya Inspiration Nation on YouTube as well. Hit subscribe and you will be told when we are going live. Um, leave us a review, hit like, five star button, all that good stuff. So, Joe, I believe that I might be the master of ceremonies this week. Is that correct? You certainly are, yeah. This is, I'm going to hijack next week, by the way, because next week is our four year anniversary. Just want to put that out there to everyone. So, we would really love it if you joined us next week, where we will do a four year retrospective. But for this week, I'd like to, so we've talked about this in various guises, but I was thinking about this during the week, and I want to talk about the power of gratitude. Oh, I like that. Power, gratitude, yeah. More importantly, why I think it's important to exercise it as well. Um, and there's lots of different ways to do this. We'll get into all of that. But I think it's really good to talk about. So before we start, Joe, this is something, you see, you're um, a big advocate as well. So what does it mean to you personally when I talk about gratitude? Or I say, do you exercise gratitude? How would you explain that to someone? So I, I can tell you from a personal perspective and just, just saying thank you for, for the things that I do have and currently being grateful for what I have right now and where I am um, and actually taking a moment in the moment to be where I am. And if I was explaining it to someone else, I would just say it's appreciating what can you appreciate where you are right now. It's just about appreciation for where you are and what are the, what's the good things that you can appreciate, like the smallest things you can imagine that you think are small, but it could be really big things. So like for me, it's um, in, we've got a local sort of cuckoo trail here, just to walk there and listen to birds, be able to see the birds and stuff like that. And we just appreciate that moment and being grateful for that. Um, and that never used to happen before when I suffered, um, as I've said in the podcast before with mental health, I, I didn't really sort of see that. I didn't really recognize it. I and mean, that's really helped me. That's, that's what I think. That, that for, that's for me, that's what gratitude is for me when you say it. No, that's good. Thank you for sharing on that and, and linking it back with how that's helped you and stuff in the past as well. So uh, for those who, some people might do it, some don't, but a, a, a textbook way, if you like, of, of practicing this would be at the, the start of the day or the end of the day, you have a gratitude list where what you do is you you write down i think three is normally the standard people say to go to but three things that you're grateful for and like you said joe they can be big massive things that might have happened in the day or the previous day or they could be little everyday day-to-day -day things which often are actually the most powerful things and you know that can be down to as much as it's freezing outside but i'm inside and i've got the heating on or i'm really looking forward to a meal tonight or we went out and had something that was really nice or i got to go to the cinema there yesterday and watch for me, latest Marvel film, whatever it is. But, you know, re things that you are grateful for that have happened to you or you've got upcoming, and I say big or as small, and that's the that's the pretense of doing it. And I will I will say, as you know, I'm not a list man generally, Joe, is I don't do that, but I think I do it in my own way. I really buy into the mindset. So I will, you know, if I'm in the house and there's stuff I've got that I've, all, I've wanted to have in the past and I've got now, and I will take a moment to acknowledge that i have in front of me when i work i've got a big wall here of nerdy things that i like you know posters of things mm -hmm. i like or collectibles i've had or things like that I've, I've shown you what that is and i'll sometimes just look at that and be really like appreciative because they'd be i think if they weren't mine and i saw someone else had that i'd be like oh that'd be really cool i wish i had that so there's there's things you can do i think just to to take those moments to to take that in and think about it but i think the power of it is huge i think generally mm. as a species we're predisposed to defensive that's you know from our instincts from back in the wild running around killing dinosaurs whatever it was we used to do back in those days but you've got a natural inbuilt defense instinct as a species so if we sense a threat we will defend ourselves and i think that can go wider that you're almost scanning for threat so there's 
I think there is a, a lean that our minds have to go to what could be perceived as a negative because this could go wrong, this could be a problem, this could happen. All, all those things I think are, are experienced from that survival instinct to one way or another. And I think there's also, we talked about, I mean, there's an episode ages ago, I can't even remember the number, I want to guess at 14 and have a look in a minute and we'll see if it really is, <laughs> that we called Avoid the Moaning Club because it's so easy to fall into mm. negativity. You know, it's a lot easier to complain about a problem than solve a problem. Or it's a lot easier to create the manifestation of a problem to avoid challenges. So, you know, again, and I think all of these root from the same place. And I think it's a fight. I think as people, it's not just be more positive than negative. I think we have to fight our natural urges to be negative. I don't think it's you're just sat in the middle and you can choose to go one way or the other. I think all of that stuff comes in. I saw a really good infographic, actually, on... Um, LinkedIn the other day there's a guy I've started following it's the same guy I got the train story from that I talked about a few weeks ago oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and he had the it was the ladder of accountability and it was like a ladder up and you've got your first four steps and it starts with you know things like blame denial all those things that are the you know the steps you know where you start you you, you refuse to even see there's a problem then you blame other people for it then it's the can't that you can't solve it and that moves into acceptance of a problem and thinking of ideas and it goes all the way up until you get to true accountability and it's I think it's if you're on that bottom rung you've almost got to go through all of those steps to get to the top bit and again I think without being conscious about it and without working on how you are the human instinct is almost below that line rather than above it and don't be wrong it's you know we're in a place where we are above that we advocate doing that it's what all this is about but I do think it's a fight you have to train yourself the same that if you never run your fitness will be really low we talked off air joe you were saying about how you've got a really high level of fitness right now um well compared to what it was but no 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 don't and don't <laughs> don't talk it down but that's come from doing the work if you weren't doing the work you'd be in the bad state if you like the same that dieting if you just eat crap all the time which is an instinct well you know it's like that's comfort food it's a go-to it's very easy to do but it's very difficult to not do it, which is what gets you the good results. You have to fight the, the path of least resistance, which is, again, I think it's a natural state to go to. And I think it's the same with mindset. I think we are built to air towards the cautious, which breeds negativity, and you have to fight that to get to the other side. And I think that's where the gratitude thing comes in. I think by that's one way of training your brain and forcing that and making it something you're surrounded by. And that's where I think the importance of it really comes in. Yeah, I'd agree with all of that. And I think it comes down to environment too, what you put in your environment to help you do that. Because it, like you said, if you, if you surround yourself with people that are always negative, that is going to rub off. And so it's, do, you need, do you need to change that environment? What do you need to support you? So for me, things I have are like, at the minute, I've got a ton of Stephen Covey, Covey books over there, five or six books, some tennis books. I've just showed Lee, actually, the next book I'm going to read, Good to Great. I'm trying to surround and yourself that by, that with one, things. Jay? It's by Jim Collins. I'm, I'm really excited to read it. You know, what I have learned from this and about gratitude is that if you, want to, if you want to be doing things like gratitude, you've got to surround yourself with doing it. So for me now, I just sometimes go into a zone where I do feel gratitude, but I do have a journal. Now, I haven't written it all every day. In fact, I've probably been off it for about a week, um, but I go to it, it's there, and I, I fill it in when I feel the need to do it now. But I'm, I'm always thinking about what's next. You know, how can I be a bit better? And you talking about gratitude is how can you know that bringing that into my life and actually there's times when I'm, I'm making the bed and i'm thinking i'm just thinking i'm going to make the bed this bed possible and then when i've made it and i feel good and i'm grateful that i can do it i'm grateful that i can you know have a nice cook meal i'm great you know i'm grateful i've got you guys here you know um doing this podcast i'm grateful that i found purpose and all these things have now come much more naturally and you're absolutely right that we do default to negativity much much more it's actually like it is, it is what we default to because of, like you said, the survival instinct, right? We've always had to look for dangers and it's survival. That's what it is. And we have to consciously look at that anxiety, which I think it's anxiety. For me, it was anxiety. And it's about how we are conscious of that and become just more aware, you know, how we are behaving and can we think and feel, okay, what am I actually thinking right now? What am I actually feeling right now? And if you're feeling in a really, really difficult place, the best thing to true to train yourself is in the hard moments 
Absolutely, so when they talk about yeah. training, yeah, it's when you said, so to train yourself is when it's hard, that's when you need to do it most. Yeah, because that's when you'll be tested. So that's why you need like support tools, like books, like journals, like things you can go to to use to help you through it. Anxiety is definitely one of them. We, we naturally are negative. I think Andrew Huberman talked about this, and I think I referenced it in one of the podcasts we had before, right? Where Andrew Huberman said to, to practice gratitude, he said, if you think of something that happened in the past, an experience, and you can relive it, and you are grateful for that, like someone gave you a big good decent bit of feedback and you can go oh, i remember that i feel really gratitude in fact i've had some brilliant feedback from a group that i trained and i've still got the card and i've got a plant and i've i've basically got him downstairs and i use them as bookmarks as a bookmark actually i'll go and i'll go and get it i'll see you I'll furiously go. looking around the room for him, get, then hang on hang on while joe's off looking for them i just remind you all to check us out at inspirationnation.org.uk for everything to the podcast full archive inspiration nation store details coaching service and most importantly sign up for joe's newsletter you can do that there just click on the blog enter your email details and you will get some inspiration in your inbox every week welcome back i just Joseph. realized i just realized have you been recording this yes oh cool brilliant um lovely um this is it this was it this was it i've got a thank you literally a card um i've got some i've got some shortbread I'm a good shout out to, and I've got some lovely comments like, um, you know, uh, which one? Let's just think of one. Okay, thank you for all the support during and after training. You made it easy, so easy to settle back into into insurance after long being out. So thank you. So things like that, and so I keep them, and I've got like um, a whole cupboard, and actually it's in my five regrets of dying book that I keep it as a bookmark. So I have all these little reminders of the things so when i'm not feeling great i can just look at them and say ah i'm making an impact i you know I, I i am doing things that are good okay today may not be a good day but there are things that are happening that are good right and even today i was talking to lee about oh the growth has been a bit static and lee reminded me i was probably being a bit negative actually lee reminded, <laughs> but that's not what we look at we look at the long term we don't look at the daily and i'm i think oh it's a bit static we're not, we're not we've done this really massive growth daily and um it sort of dropped off a little bit plateaued a little bit and it's going ah oh. and then lee was going yeah but look at the long term and we have really grown which is fabulous Massively. um so thank you to everyone on tiktok thank you to everyone on youtube um who's there um i really appreciate you because you know the more likes we get and also if you're you watch on youtube please press that like button like 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 because it gets the algorithm out also like the same with um tiktok if you're watching and you enjoy this please like and share because that makes a big difference to the algorithm and gets more out there so thank you but that's that's my take there's so much and so Andrew, then that's Andrew so you can relive that so I relived that if I when I actually relived that I actually felt a little bit of an emotion and they say that's and he said that's actually that's proven science that actually does make you feel better and actually improves how you feel and think about yourself so that's science for you Andrew Huberman you can check him out on Instagram and on YouTube a very scientific guy anyway there you go thank you for that Joe Me. no no good input good input and I want to do the same so bringing it back to real life like we say on here it's not just textbook stuff we talk about this is stuff we live and breathe and do I talked a lot about mindfulness on previous podcasts gratitude well i think has really made a huge positive impact and this comes somewhere where i especially i would say during my 20s i think of my life in phases and they all bleed into one i'm the same person throughout it there's a lot of consistency that's gone through it but i also can really see the differences in myself at different stages in my life so if we put this block in my in my 20s i do think anxiety and worry was a big thing for me but for a part of my 20s it was there if if there was if I was waiting for something or if there was a decision to be made or I needed to rely on someone else accepting something or deciding something I think I've talked on here the story before about waiting for a car we were trading in another one there was there wasn't an issue with the documents they just needed to check something but I was like it's not going to work they're not going to do and I was like really before anything happened got into it and that that was me that's what i did and through loads of different stages i've heard to more you know taking control and being positive and, and all of that sort of stuff and i think gratitude is a big part of that being able to the, the converse to it is people are always like well i want this that person's got that why can't i have this and you're always looking looking forward but with almost like a victim complex attached to it and i think that's the opposite to gratitude where it's like got this and you know i've built this and this is better than it was before or actually this isn't as good but it still could be this and taking pleasure in in the small things i think that again 
me now having that mentality has pulled me from that place where I would have been envious of other people or looking for other things or feeling like I could never do something because someone else has and now really focusing on what I've got and what I can achieve and what I can build and what I can do and and again gratitude is a huge anchor for that and it's you know it's not just talk this genuinely has happened my mindset has gone from here to here and it's because of these things now that's the kind of inspiration I want to give this week is just getting people to try whatever way works again I don't write it down I do it as more of a in and out thing in my head so I'm about and and doing things and seeing things but I do I have certain things that are almost like my triggers to remind me I'm glad I've got this or I'm glad I did that or I'm glad I could see that it just puts you in a more positive space and I think it just makes everything better when you're doing that it's not just that one thing it starts to resonate in your whole life like you said Joe about how you surround yourself with things if you're conscious to do that like I said, for this person I, I follow on LinkedIn, comes up all the time, and it gives these great, aff- for what for me aren't just new learnings, but they would have been years ago. They're now affirmations of those things. Like, oh yeah, I remember that, or I do that, or I did that, and I stopped it, and I should start trying it again. And I, it, I think it all balls up in that same mindset, which ultimately, like I said, it's you can't just choose to be negative or positive positive you have to fight against the negativity like you do all those other things but the choice is you have to choose to fight against it and once you've made that choice that's the first step and it all starts moving ahead so I don't think it's just choosing positivity it's choosing to fight against the negativity and once you do that you start the ball rolling you're right and and that thing about positivity, I don't like fake positivity. You know, no, hundred oh, percent. That's almost like avoiding the whole thing. You can't avoid the negativity. You've got to almost like acknowledge it and then make the changes you need. And that's what, when you said about you're following someone on LinkedIn. You know, that's what I mean. It's like, like your social media right now. Who do you follow? I've done this before, I think, on the podcast. Who do you follow? So you need to find out who you follow, why you follow. Unfollow the people that are bringing you down that, that do not do not add anything to your life and follow people that add value, that bring something. So I've got, I know we've talked about um, on the podcast, Simon Squibb, Mark Drager, Evan Carmichael. I can just scroll through my social media. My feed will be about people trying to make a difference instead of all that all that stuff about oh you should be doing <laughs> you're this you should swear. be doing that you were gonna, swear, I, was gonna swear. I could feel it no 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 so it's about you know when you when you're not feeling great you know when, when your environment when you put on your phone and what's on your phone so actually i just changed my phone to a picture of my um my beloved right it was it was a picture of me and my beloved then now it's just a picture of my beloved on my phone and it's a great picture every time i look at it i smile at it like so it's creating that environment to say god i'm so glad i'm with uh with my with my beloved right and and it's like we've been together for 25 years and i can still feel like that it's it's those moments and those things like even now look i've got the books i've got i've got things i've even got my look even here husband valentine's day i've got the card i'm this is this is my this is where i work so i've got personal development i've got pictures i've got you know, this it helps me become grateful. And do you know what it's all come down to? It's, it's come down to that self-awareness and actually create an environment that, that, that harnesses that gratitude. And that's what you've got to build. Because if you're not feeling gratitude right now, it's probably because you've not built the environment for it. James Keir in his book, Atomic Habits, always says it's about what you have in your environment. So if you want to eat better, you've got to start eliminating things that you don't eat, right? Or yeah. start putting stuff in that you are going to eat. Now, I know some people, like Evan Carmichael, will say, well, look, what I like to do is that he, so when Carmichael did it, before, he did it the other way. And this might work for you, right? For him to like not eat Doritos, and I don't want to like go on too long, but he basically put a bag of Doritos in front of him every day and he would say, I'm stronger than Doritos. So he'd have that as a reminder to remind him not to eat them by having them. So that might work for you, right? Same with gratitude. You could have something that it may not, it may be something that gives you the, the opposite of it. I don't know. It depends on what sort of person you are. But for me, I always have to, I want to have things that it's an easy go to it's easy to do it's 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 actionable like I've got my my um my journal downstairs like I sit downstairs in the morning and I'll go oh well, I'm going to write in the journal it's there the pen is there the book is there and so I can do all these things and like I'm very conscious like you said about recording all the bits and pieces and having them there so if I need them they're there but actually 
as I'm thinking now, I've almost like unconsciously built it because I've been constantly thinking, but now it's unconscious, that, almost that unconscious competence now. Like we talked about that learning data that yeah. I'm doing this without almost like thinking about it, but creating that environment all the time to like do these things now, like making the bed and all that. That's all, all almost automatic, but I sometimes say, oh, I'm really grateful for that. And it will just be that moment. I just really do think actually from this whole conversation, the big thing I've taken away is it is your environment that dictates whether you will train yourself. And the first steps are always the most hardest steps. I know when I suffer my mental health, the first steps are actually to make a step and actually acknowledge that I'm not in a great place yeah. is, is the first step to starting to create change. And then just doing it very small, not thinking I've got to go and do this and do that because you get overwhelmed and then you don't do it and then it's too big. It's about small, tiny, 1% actions every single day that are repeatable, that are easy to repeat for you right so for, 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 for lee it might be like you say thinking about whatever but a trigger for me it's like you know waking up maybe having my you know having the cards in as, as you use them as bookmarks it reminds me right um whatever it is easiest for you is what you've got to tap into so anyway lee, that that is really environment i think really would in now in harnessing a in an environment of gratitude and actually designing right towards it will really help you push for those difficult times if you find it hard to develop that sort of habit 100 percent. don't think i could give any better advice myself joe i just want to shout as well so on linkedin dr jorg if i'm saying it right j-o-e-r-g storm dr george storm Ooh. is who i am following okay. there's loads of really really just again little snippets of positivity every day can you send me the details i'd like to follow them on linkedin Absolutely are they on instagram or anything like that i've not had a look yet hold on i look off screen okay. on my phone maybe maybe not i'll find okay. out but i'll send you the details or stick a post on on twitter with that as well but that is who i've been following yeah i say i can't i can't advocate it for it anymore if you haven't start if you do practice gratitude well done to you you are on that path if you don't start today start now just get a bit of paper write down three things form it into a habit it will literally it will change your life 100 percent. and like joe says build that out take those Take those little actions, but part of those little actions can be build your environment. What does your social media look like? What does your workspace look like? What does your home space look like? Um, and just make those conscious decisions to fight the negativity. And make it as easy as possible for you to take those actions. That's what 100%. I'd say. Just, do you have to have the notebook out in front of you by your bedside or something? I don't know, whatever, right? To make it easy for you to record the three things, right? Whatever's easiest. Because your brain will always default to easy, right? Your brain will always want to do the easiest so thing, so make it that, easy make for your brain to do it. You. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Joe, absolutely. So, yes, that's wrapped up a wonderful <laughs> subject. Everyone out there, we really appreciate you. We are coming up on our four-year anniversary soon. We appreciate everyone supporting the show. Tell friends, tell family, get people to listen. That's what helps us grow. And as Joe mentioned earlier, the algorithms, we need the support from them. So if you're with us live right now, hit like, hit subscribe. If you're listening on a podcast player, whatever time this is, just come back out, hit subscribe, hit the review button, hit the five star button. Same on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at listen to I N, listen T O I N. Get all the details for everything. And of course, head over to inspirationnation.org.uk. Get some Inspiration Nation merch. Sign up for the newsletter. Full archive of all our shows. By the way, the Moaning Club, Joe, episode 10. I was close. I said 12. Oh, my God. That's 10. Not so long ago okay it doesn't feel that long ago though does it no that and that was two and a half months into what has been a f almost a four-year journey so far we in fact we will be likely recording next week again TikTok, youtube hit subscribe it will tell you when we go live but on or very close to what is the exact four-year anniversary of the first episode going up let me love it the yeah, 14th I can't believe of it. March it's so of 2019 is when we started on this. Mad. And it's before the pandemic. It was. It was before, before the pandemic. Before the pandemic. We've got like, oh, I can't believe we've got like, Anyway, we'll do this next week. because Absolutely, we will. That's a little preview. Yeah. Again, if you like what you're hearing, hit subscribe, like, review, etc., etc. All that good stuff. I've either had not too much coffee or too much coffee because my brain's going all over the place right now. Are they caffeinated? Is it caffeinated it's this time of night? very caffeinated, Jane. At this time of night, you're not going to sleep. <laughs> I'll be fine. I will be fine. <laughs> right. I think all that is left for me to do is give us a countdown. Yeah, go on. I will say three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys Catch later. Catch you guys later. Thank you, Lee. Thank you.
Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video go live and don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out i really really appreciate it and lastly don't forget out to check the newsletter the link is in the description below that's where i can talk directly to you without through the youtube throughout the social because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with inspiration nation ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next so i'd love to see you in the next video so please click on those links please follow through please let's get this community building i appreciate you so until next time i'll see you in the next video inspiration nation and i'll catch you guys later